Hold on. This whole video blog idea, it's under the idea that the filming we are doing is based on a very limited budget. So we won't talk about production with a high budget or where the production can afford, afford to shoot 15 shots per day. We're talking about 40 shots per day, a scene per day basically. But this doesn't mean that production has to be a, that has to look like low budget. One thing I want to talk about is my experience in blocking. Blocking in filmmaking means that you, as a director, you have to show the actors what's going on. So let's say you have in one scene an actor or an actress has to go from, you need to walk from here, from A to B, then from B to C, and to C to D. This is the way it works, but does doesn't have to be some people, some director let, let the actor or actress do like as they feel like, you know, which is more natural. But at the moment I'm using this technique. I think it's very useful when you have a low budget film. So for example, my knowledge in, te uh, in, in terms of terms was very limited. In fact, when they asked me to do the blocking, well, I knew how to do the blocking, but uh, I completely forgot the meaning of the blocking word. Someone told me, can you do the blocking with the actors? I was like, uh, yeah, what's that? Ah, and then I said, yeah, 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 of course, not to do. Which is very useful for low budget filmmaking. That is one of the things I learned in this first scene, which gave me a lot of knowledge on the go. I didn't know many things. I don't know many things. Ask if you don't know, you know, ask the DOP what to do. And he told me, oh, yeah, you need to do this, this and that. Cool, done. You know, don't be, don't be shy to ask. Simple as that. I'm not sure you can hear me. The actor and the actress, they said that, uh, that their ears was very, very useful. And I agree with that. It was very, very useful for all of us, basically. For me, for them, for everyone, for the, for the DOP as well. Because compared with, the, with all the shots we've done, was very basic compared. Because probably we were rehearsed also for like, probably for like, let's say for 15 shots compared with about 42, 43 shots in total. About, yeah, and then, and then punch. If you go without rehearsal, it's, it's very difficult. We are in December now. There are only three to four months preparation for the rest of the film. So I need to hurry up with that. In this right moment, I am working on the on the scene. The main character meets with Mike and, and the company man. So I'm working on that right now. Today I, I managed to see what, what type of camera work for a specific shot. When the actress pointing the, the teaser gun towards company man. And I was struggling to see which angle, which which way the camera would work. Rack focus from the face to the, to the, to the teaser gun. But then I thought maybe we can do a drop jib. So basically from the face it goes down to where she sitting on the floor and so we do like from the face saying the line then dropping down to the point where there is the teaser gun and then focus on that but I thought that would be like a clean clean and nice shot so hopefully it's gonna work I've been thinking a lot about this shot and I think that's that's the best solution so far After learning from, from storyboarding and exchanging the ideas and the storyboard to the, with the DOP, I had to put like what type of 
camera as well, like handheld camera or uh, Jeep or uh, track shot or fixed camera. And it's good to have like already like written down something like that. And then you can modify once you talk with the DUP, which I think is very helpful. One shot that I'm still struggling is the fighting scene with Mike. From the punch to the hitting the, the ribs of Mike. I don't know if you do, do like a swipe shot or a or fixed camera. I think the shot that is gonna take the longest to film is going to be the teaser shot. So basically it's like the special effect one. Basically we need to use the wires. We're gonna shoot from the from the teaser gun towards company man legs, I suppose. So I think that one is gonna take a little bit more time than the other ones. So location wise, you need to plan a few things. First of all, once you find the location, once you find the location, you have to keep in mind that how far is the nearest toilet? How far is the nearest near, nearest cafe? How far is the nearest hospital? You never know. Is the nearest station? There are several things to keep in mind because when you have low budget, you cannot afford to have people being late or people stuck in traffic or people looking for toilet for one hour and stuff like that. So you need to you have to keep in mind about all these things. Likely, the location I found is very close to the other locations. So I got very lucky in that way. I found also like there are several cafes nearby, one with a toilet as well. So it was a kind of perfect location, mostly for a low budget production like mine. So let's talk about storyboarding. Storyboarding, for my point of view, is extremely helpful and extremely important. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be useful. Even like stick men or stick women or stick animals, whatever. With the storyboarding also, I learned many things on the go. How to use the arrows inside the box of the storyboard to show that there is a dolly in or dolly out camera action, yeah? When you point the arrows towards the center of the of the box. As far as I used it, it means like there is a dolly in action there. If you instead if you point, the, point them out from the center towards the corners, there is a dolly out for that shot. As long as it, it works for you, that's the best. Let's talk about budget. We're talking about for every day 500 pounds plus which it seems not much for a for a normal production but for us like micro production like the one we're doing now it's a lot depends on many actors how many people in the crew and everything so now I need to find some uh, way to raise money to make our budget bigger and one way is through uh, website like crowdfunding websites. I'm not familiar with that. In fact, I never tried any of that. But according to many productions, that's one of the way to gain some like, budget. So at the moment, as I probably said before, I'm using my own, my own savings, which is not much. And it's a little bit of a struggle at the moment. But I'm trying to spread the cost. I'm trying to spread the budget and the days of filming. So I will try to spread the money and the filming dates in a smart way, which means that I will need to do a budget list. I think it's a very good idea to keep your head off uh, money problems, mostly during the time when you are creating the project and everything, because it can really slow down the process. Apart from the uh, creative process, if you're also taking other positions, such as director, fight coordinator, uh, costume designer, and everything, then you really need to keep your head off problems. All of them. Okay, now it's time to go to work and add some money to spend on the project. 